Hello and welcome. Thank you for uh, watching my video. Um, so I'm Corey Wamsley. I am the CEO of Aurora Corealis Publishing. And normally when I do my blogs, I do it by myself, but I also really like to bring on experts to help tell everybody what they need to be doing with their books and how to get a bunch of noise around their launch and all of that kind of good stuff. So today I have Kelly Commander with me. Kelly, can you introduce yourself, please? I can. Thank you, Corey. As she said, my name is Kelly Commander. My company name is called K2 Creative, and I'm a visibility strategist. What is a visibility strategist? Think of it as a publicist, but all positivity. So what I do is I partner with Corey and I help tell people's transformational and important and amazing stories. Awesome. And Kelly does an amazing job of doing that. Um, I always love seeing all the creative things that she comes up with and um, for helping our authors spread the word about their messages. So I wanted to bring Kelly on because obviously she is an expert in visibility. And we're talking today about some best practices for social media for authors. So I'm going to interview Kelly and we're going to pick her brain a little bit today on how you as an author can uh, be successful with your social media to get the word out about your message. So Kelly, first off, why is a social media presence important for authors? Well, think about it. Everybody is scrolling all day, every day. And yeah, you can Google books and you can Google subject material, but Lately, within the last, I'd say maybe two or three years, not only are people using Instagram and Facebook to promote their books, but a lot of people have now gotten into Pinterest. Most people find Pinterest something where they go and they find recipes or they find um, projects to maybe go pick up a dresser and they'll redo it with paint and stain or whatever, decorating ideas. But now it's, it's proven that people are using Pinterest to search for books. So, and also with LinkedIn too, because LinkedIn, I think you can do fiction on LinkedIn, but if you're writing a business book, I think it's important to get your book on LinkedIn as well, because that's what people, that's what they're doing. They're looking at social media and they're listening to podcasts to find books. Um, I've been told multiple times that podcasts sell books and the easiest way to get on a podcast is to start following them on social media. So it all just fits together. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so for the people out there who hate social media, because I know that a lot of people hate social media, um, let's look at the other side of the argument. So why isn't a website enough? Just having your own website with your book up on there. You know, I think that's that's a multifaceted answer because a website gives you validity. It gives you credibility. You know, if, if you Google somebody and you find a website, you're like, okay, they're a real person or they're a real business or this is a real book. You can only do so much with a website. Yes, you can have video, you can have blogs, you can have photos, information. But I don't know about you, but anytime I'm on somebody's website, I scroll to the bottom to see what social channels they have. And if I see that Instagram you know, symbol, or if I see the Pinterest P, mm -hmm. I'm clicking on it to see what they're doing on social media. I just think it's an additional way. I, I you know, I know there are a lot of people that just get bogged down with the social media stuff and you get on to promote your own things and then you end up getting sucked in. <laughs> it's like this huge yeah. time suck where you're scrolling and you're searching and you're clicking on friends things and you're looking at photos. But I think that if you're purposeful in sharing on your social media, what you have on your website, I just think that it's just working in tandem. It's just making your website stronger and your website is making your social media stronger. Okay. So they kind of work together in that way. Yes, I believe so. Yes. All right, anybody can have a Facebook page. Anybody can throw an Instagram account up there and start posting things. But to me, a website gives you that credibility and it makes you makes you valid. It makes people believe in what you're promoting or selling or whatever you're doing, whether it's a product or a service, a book, anything that you have. If you have a website. It makes you makes you look real. Okay. So it seems like it would be kind of a balance. So like the website is kind of a like stability sort of thing. And then social media, you're kind of like, hey, I am real. I'm posting, you know, every day, every couple of days, I'm sharing new things. So it's almost like this is in flux and this is, you know, your, your foundation. 
Yeah. Yeah. The, the social media stuff is your constant, Okay. you know, whether it's five days a week, two days a week, however often you're posting, mm-hmm. whereas the, the, just the stagnant, the social media, I mean, the website page is just that, that place for people to go to get information about you. That's just standard, good information. You know, you want photos, mm-hmm. you want video, you want awards and, you know, places that authors have been seen and heard. It's really important to list that on there too, you know, so that you, they can look up articles that you were f- featured in or a podcast that you were speaking on and you can share it on both outlets. I just think both are really important. Okay. That was an awesome answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I try um, to please. <laughs> so um, I know there are so many different kinds of social media platforms, Um, Are there certain ones that you recommend that work better for authors or, you know, like are some better than others just in general? I think they're all good. I think the key is using the right hashtags and using the right phrases to be found on the social media channels. Like for instance, book talk, you know, it's part of TikTok. So it's the hashtag, the word book and then T-O-K. That is where people are going to TikTok to find authors and to find books to read. So I think using those those correct hashtags, and I mean, the audience and the, the general public has to know what those hashtags are. So posting, and I've even used book talk on Instagram as a hashtag, because who knows, people can be on Instagram, but they're searching for authors and books that are also on TikTok. So they're putting that hashtag into a different social media channel. Does that make sense? It, yeah. I would, I would probably do it on Facebook too. I would put on book talk. Um, I think that's the most important part, no matter what social media channel you're using is make it easy for people to find you. If you're writing, um, teen fiction, use it as a hashtag. If you're writing for, um, mature women, you know, if you're writing for women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, who want just a mature novel, put mature women as a hashtag, um, business book for business books. Mm -hmm. I just think it's really important to narrow down and you can do that research too. You can search most popular um, author hashtags on Instagram and see what it comes up with and see which ones fit who your audience is, who you're writing for and what your book is about. That's the main thing is getting noticed. Okay. Yeah. um, I think hashtags can be kind of confusing for people. So that was really good. Um, one trick that I've tried now that you were mentioning hashtags was following other authors who are in my genre and seeing what hashtags they're using. Um, because you know, if they've tried it and it's working, then, you know, I can try it and see if it works for me too. So exactly. Yeah. So why recreate things? And if you find that there's a hashtag you're using that has 80 followers, and then you find a hashtag that has 80,000 followers, Uh, bigger bang for your buck is that 80,000 follower hashtag, obviously, um, you can be creative and, you know, and I also, another thing too, is I also think that the, the title of the book, you need to use that as the hashtag as well. Yeah. There's not going to be a ton of followers for it, but once you start to get an audience and a following, they'll probably follow that hashtag and look for more posts about your book. So always do your book hashtag as well on any kind of social sites. Okay. Very good. And your name. Yes. I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. Your name. Yeah. And you know, it wouldn't even hurt. And I've done this with a few clients where I have tagged authors that are writing about the same subject material tagged podcasts that my uh, clients want to be guests on, mm-hmm. but there's all kinds of different ways to connect with people through social media, whether it's Instagram, Pinterest, you know, Facebook, whatever, you know, make sure that you're being interactive and even tag your friends and ask them to repost things for you too. I think that's really important is that you get the buy-in from the people that are closest to you and they help you promote your book. Very good. Awesome. Um, Yeah, that's a lot of good information there. Uh, So when should people start talking about their books? I say the minute it's in their head. I know you probably agree with that. Just the people that you work with from, I mean, from the minute you have an idea for a book, you need to start telling people about it. You know, I'm in the process or I'm thinking about, or I've met with a publisher and, you know, I think that you need to start getting some interest and getting some people on your team, for lack of a better term, 
as soon as that idea comes into your head. Um, and it's not too late if you already wrote a book. Let's say you already wrote a book and you're watching this and you're like, well, I wrote the book and it's kind of just sitting there and I haven't done anything with it. That's fine. Start now. Um, and as far as the heavy duty, you know, creating a social media page for the book and starting the promotion and maybe a landing page or a full website dedicated, I'd say anywhere from three to six months prior to when you're planning on publishing or whenever your publisher gives you that, that date of publishing, or at least the month, you know, to say, Hey, this will be ready by January. I would start three to six months prior to that. Okay. So if we're starting three to six months prior, like how often should we be posting about the book at that point? I wouldn't kill it. I wouldn't do it, you know, seven days a week because then you're going to lose people because they're going to say, oh my gosh, she's talking about something that doesn't exist. Or he's talking about <laughs> something that's not coming for six months. Right. I'd say once or twice a week, um, you know, throw a post out there and say, hey, don't forget, I'm still working real hard on my book. You know, it's, coming in January or whatever. And, you know, throw some teasers out there too. I wouldn't give away everything in the beginning. I would just throw out some teasers okay. about maybe part of the title or, you know, some of the subject material, maybe a sentence or two from in the book that you really love. And that really describes what the book is about and mm -hmm. can capture an audience. Um, yeah. yeah. I think everybody's different in how they want to approach that. Um, but I think overkill in the beginning is, is going to lose a lot of your audience. Okay. So it's almost like you start out here and it kind of crescendos into, you know, screaming about the book on the day of the launch. Exactly. The okay. most exciting day ever is launch day. <laughs> yes. Um, actually, I get this question a lot. What is a launch? What do you consider to be the launch of a book? Go time. <laughs> <laughs> launch day is just that. It is the day that you are directing people to buy the book, whether it's a digital download, a print version, you know, Amazon, it's the day that the book is available to the public. And you want people to get on and buy the book that day, especially if you're doing a special download, whether you do a 99 cent download or a $2.99 cent download, whatever it is that you're doing, mm -hmm. you want people on Amazon that day buying your book because it helps you reach bestseller status. And that's a huge accomplishment. And it feels like a million bucks because we did it. You've done it multiple times, but you know, we did it with the 21 book back in 2021. And it's just an amazing feeling. And to put that little, you know, Amazon bestseller or Amazon, you know, best selling author sticker on your social media or on the front of the paperback book, it's a big deal. So launch day is really important. Um, I think having a launch event is very important. Um you know, in person is always best. But if you have to do something virtual, it's great to get your family and friends and your colleagues together for a kickoff. You know, hop on social media the day of the launch from 6 to 8 p.m., like an open house and let people come in and out and talk about the book and ask you questions. And, you know, any kind of publicity you can get around a book is, is worth your time. And you can post about it on social media. <laughs> Exactly. You can do screenshots of your audience. You can share questions they asked and things like that. You know, people want real life stuff. They want to be able to see, you know, behind the scenes and, you know, what's this author doing and how are they celebrating their launch day? Video and photos. It's, I think that's what it's all about. Okay. I was actually going to ask about that. If it's better to, you know, keep it all with videos or keep it all with um, written because, you know, or writers, you know, should we just be writing or, um, or, or, you know, what if people don't feel comfortable with the videos? Is that okay too? I think so. It's not for everybody. Um, yeah. you know, I've had people who have said, oh, I don't want to do a Facebook live or, oh, I don't want to do a video. Yeah. And sometimes you can twist arms a little bit and convince people to do it. Um, you know, I would share other, um, authors or other publicists or other, uh, Publishers like you, I would share their videos and just show people that it can just be a really relaxed conversation, like what we're having right now, yeah. you know, and especially with authors, you can give them the questions ahead of time and they can know what you're going to be asking and they can kind of pre-plan their answers. And yeah, I mean, I think video is important. It's not do or die, but mm -hmm. you want some kind of graphics besides just content. So at least photos at the very least. Okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about like the posts that you're doing pre-launch and you're sharing about the book, uh, about the cover and, oh, we got the cover. Oh, we've got the title. 
Um, here's a little bit about chapter three. Um, and of course, during the launch, you're like, here, head over here, go get the book. What about after the launch? Like what kind of stuff can they be sharing, you know, a month later, three months later, six months later? I think that it's still important to share the book cover. You know, it's important to share little bits and pieces from inside the book. Um, praise for the book is really important. Yes. So yes. And if somebody gives you praise, they're giving you, you know, the okay to share it, to put it on, you know, on the back of your book or inside of your book or on Amazon. So I would pull those things and share the praise that people are giving you because everybody's going to have a different perspective about your book. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's going to have a different, maybe aha moment or a different thought about a character or a thought about a process, if it's a business book that you're talking about. And I think that helps people from all different perspectives say, oh, maybe this is a book for me. You know, I read this review or I read this, this great piece that somebody wrote about your book. I, I should have that book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Um, that's always something that I find really interesting is to go through and I know they say, you know, don't read the comments, but go on Amazon and read all the reviews that you get from your book, because it's so neat to see, like we all have our, you know, everything, our pool of knowledge that we're coming to everything with. So each of our pools of knowledge, all of our experiences are very different. And then we come to this book that's the same book with all these different perspectives. And it's so neat to see like how it impacts my life differently from how it impacts your life and you know this other person's life and all the different uh, ways that they're reacting. So I know I enjoy seeing that. And I think that's oh, a cool for thing. Sure. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about reviews. You know, if you're going to buy a product on Amazon, one of the first things you're going to do is read the review. Yeah. And you know, people are doing it for books too. You could read the back of a book and think, wow, this is the best book ever. I have to buy this, but you might read a review that kind of turns you off and says, oh, maybe this isn't for me, or you're going to read a review that, that cements that mm -hmm. like, this is the perfect book for me to be reading right now. And think about characters too, for fiction books, how different people perceive characters. You can write about the same two sisters. We'll use that for an example. <laughs> you can write about the two sister, two sisters, and one reader can love one and dislike the other and vice versa. So I think that is that is really fun. I did enjoy reading reviews on on my yeah. book and I know you love reading them on yours too. Yeah. So people do like that. So share the reviews, share the praise. Yeah, absolutely. Other people are creating content for you. So you might as well use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great way to look at it too. That, that's pretty brilliant, yeah. Let yeah. somebody else spend the time tapping away and, and making the review and you just copy and paste it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, screenshots actually are really nice too. Like you don't even have to copy and paste. Just That's true. Yeah. yeah. Drop it in a Canva template and just say, here's some of the praise I've received or some of the reviews of the book. And there you go. There's a social post. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that kind of brings me to the next question that I wanted to ask too. Um, you know, we're all busy and I work with a lot of leaders who are super busy people. Um, so what if they're looking at all this going, good grief, now I have to post about my book and now I have to, you know, go on and snapshot reviews and do videos. You know, what if this feels like too much or there's some things, some, maybe some tricks that you can share um, to <laughs> make it less too much um, or some, you know, best practices yeah, for sure. I think that, you know, once, once an author has graphics and content to put out there on social media, you just need to buckle down and spend a few hours and create all of your graphics with that. So, you know, the book cover and um, the reviews and the praise and maybe really great information that, you know, that you want to pull out of the book that you're willing to put out there in the public before somebody buys it spend those couple hours and create those graphics. This way you have them done, you have them in a folder, they're in one place that you can pull and put out there on social media, or you can add them to your website or whatever. Um, you know, I think that with, we mentioned this before with social media, it's a love-hate relationship. Some people love it and they wanna be on 24 seven and other people avoid it like at all costs. But it is something that's really important for you to do. Um, and I think that once the book leaves the author's plate and goes to the publisher's plate, 
and they have that little bit of downtime while the publisher and the editors are reading through and doing all that stuff, that's the time to go and create that media, to get that out there on social media. That's the time to create the images, time to pull some of the material out of the book to use for social posts. Um, I also think, and there's a lot of people who I've seen on social media who have their book map, whether it's a whiteboard or you know, something that resembles a chalkboard or whatever, whether it's in their office or their writing space, take pictures of that too and share that. People find that super interesting where you have maybe post-it notes going across the top. They're talking about each character and then how they're related or how they connect or whatever the situation is. Anything that you do, it can be your, your scratch notebook. You can take a picture of and post that for people to see. You really want that behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much content that you could be posting, but you don't want to peter out because you did so much at one time. So maybe, maybe you post, you know, hashtag fiction Friday and, and you make sure that you post something about your book every single Friday or, you know, whatever you want to create, whatever you think works for you. But at the bare minimum, I would say two posts per week probably is good. And I would probably use two or three different social media outlets. I wouldn't just put all your eggs in one basket and just use Facebook or just use Pinterest. I would divvy things up. And for most social sites, you can copy and paste that content from one social site to the next. There's not too much change in the formatting and how you need to post things. And chances are the hashtags are gonna be active and valid on any social media site that you use. Okay, that makes sense. Um, it sounds like just trying to be consistent is really more what the game is and not wearing yourself out. Exactly. Or you can just hire somebody to do it for you. Or that, yes. <laughs> That's always a good option too. Um, Seamless plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You gave us so much great information today, Kelly. Thank you. Um, was there anything that I missed that you wanted to add? No, um, I took a couple notes whenever we talked about this and I think we have covered everything. Um, you know, an, well, another important thing real quick that I'll mention is having a good media kit to back up your uh, public relations efforts, your visibility efforts. Mm -hmm. You know, you want something, whether it's a simple one page with your headshot and the book cover and a description and all your contact information or you know, a 10 or 12 page media kit that has a lot of really heavy duty information about who you are, what you write about. If you have other publications, other books out there, you're seen and heard, you know, to show that you do have credibility because you've been on these shows and podcasts and you've been featured on print and digital publications. Um, you know, I think it's important to have a strong media kit because, you know, people may respond to an email or a, a social media post and say, send me your media kit. Womp, womp. <laughs> what if you don't have one? <laughs> yeah. So that is the only thing that I did want to talk about was just making sure and, you know, people can find, you know, you can Google media kits and take a look at that. They have them for speakers, for authors, for coaches, mm -hmm. you know, anybody, you can have a media kit made up and, you know, like I said, one page, 12 pages, whatever it takes to get your message out there, you know, that can be sent with your press release, with your book information. Um, that's really important to make sure you have some kind of a document that shows people you don't want you don't want the media to search for you once they know who you are and they want to talk with you you don't want them going to your website and trying to find your facebook or trying to see what you're doing on instagram yeah. send them all the info in one one document and be done with it that sounds good yes and i i love media media kits <laughs> me too and i love making them you and i are like addicted to making media kits they are fun <laughs> It's neat to see all of those pieces come together and it's like, here, this, this represents the, the story mm -hmm. that we're trying to share. So it's yes. really cool. Yeah. All right, Kelly. Well, thank you so much. Um, I did want to ask you, where can people find you if they wanted to reach out? Uh, my website is k2creativellc.com. So it's letter K, number two, creativellc.com and all my info's on there, social media links, email, phone number, all that good stuff. Awesome. And of course, if you do work with Aurora Corialis Publishing, you will be working with Kelly as well, because she is our uh, uh, media person. She handles all the PR. She's our uh, specialist for visibility. Um, so yes, thank you. Reach out to Kelly. Reach out to me if you have questions. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>